Hell yeah. Okay, we're back. Drew here, thatanxietyguy.com. Billy Cross, anxietyunited.com. <laughs> Episode 18. <laughs> Episode 18 coming at you. A little change of scenery here. I'm going to sit on the sofa in my, in my office. Relaxing. I'm relaxing. relaxing. I'm just today. chilling. Just chilling, talking with my pal. Yeah. Yeah. So um, today we're going to talk about well, I mean, there's a quote from the Shawshank Redemption. It's a really popular movie everybody knows. Get busy living or get busy dying. And I think it comes from a comment that I think, Billy, you had gotten on one of your on your channel, right? From Yeah, yeah, pretty much. It's a question. It's a yeah. question that made me think of that. And obviously you raised the, the quote, but it fits perfectly. The question is from H. Ness. And I can't remember. Oh, it's Hugh. Okay. Hugh on Twitter. And his question was, and this is targeted towards men, but obviously women get yeah. involved because it is the same principle but the question is as men how do you feel about doing normal dad stuff slash mum stuff when in a state of anxiety he feels guilty about not being able to do school run going to the park the shops and he worries they will pass that on to his kids so there was also um so there's that comment but there was also the comment from laura who asked correct. How yes. do you make that leap? And she understands everything we're talking about. How do you make that leap between saying, well, this is just anxiety, and her fear is she's going to do that, and she'll be wrong. And it really yeah, is yeah. a medical Find condition out, yeah. that you know that will be dangerous to her. Mm. And I think they're the same comment. I really do. I, I, I believe they're the same question. And the reason why I came up with the Shawshank quote was because at some point in this process, you actually do have to make the decision that you're going to take some risk. Mm -hmm. I think, right? So even people who don't have anxiety and don't have panic attacks and stuff like that, we life is, there's never a guarantee. Life is a risk. When you walk out the door, stuff could happen, right? Exactly. We don't think about it normally, like unless you're, you know, and you're and people with anxiety think about it all the time, but other people just walk out the door. We, you assume you'll come home at night, but mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, there's never any, take things for granted. you take things for granted and you hear about this all mm -hmm. the time, especially when tragedy hits. But I think to me, it speaks to this. Th both of those comments are, really speak to the same issue. At some point, there's you have to decide, I'm willing to take this risk. Yeah. And you have to weigh, like, I can either just sit in my house or on my sofa and try to avoid bad things or what I think might be bad things. Mm -hmm. Or, like, what's worse, you know, going out and living a life that you enjoy living and taking some sort of risk or just hiding from from possible bad things. Well, that's it, because even the what you think is the solution of sitting at home, that brings you no comfort, does it? It brings you the guilt. Yeah. It brings you the, you know, worrying about what other people are thinking. And the, the horrible thoughts that you have when you feel like you're missing out on so much. And I'm a victim of that. You know, I miss out on my daughter's dancing and stuff. And that's because I choose that what I thought would be a comfortable route. But the emotional negatives that you get from that, I think that outweighs the effects of actually going out and attempting to do the stuff because you might only feel, well, you might not feel anxiety going out, but you might only feel like 10 minutes of anxiety. Whereas if you choose not to go and do this stuff, right? Pe people live with that guilt for the rest of their lives, you know? That's the point. That That's true. And so when you, you live with that, I think... So there's two things here, and I'll, I'll kind of address, I guess, maybe Laura's thing specifically. Like, And she asked, how do you know – did I mention this already? I'm not sure if I'm repeating myself. Yeah, yeah. You know, to get to that That's point right. where, like, well, I'm going to accept that this is just anxiety, but what if I'm wrong? This yeah, was yeah. her comment. What if I'm – or the question. Mm -hmm. Like, how do you finally get to that point where you say, okay, I'm going to say this is just anxiety, but what if I'm wrong? And there's something mm -hmm. really wrong, and I, and I missed it, and something happens to me because medically I, I missed something that was wrong. Mm -hmm. And she's been told the doctors and the doctors are scratching their heads like there's nothing wrong with you. They keep telling her there's nothing wrong. But I understand where she is. I get that. And so in that situation, it, it literally comes down to like a leap of faith. Like, well, I'll take that risk. I'm going to go out and live my life as if there's nothing wrong with me. And if it turns mm -hmm. out that there was something wrong with you, what would sitting in the sofa solve anyway? Exactly. That's it. Right. It's still there. It's still there. Whatever, yeah. Yeah. Whatever it was or whatever you think it is, it doesn't go away if you sit watching TV. No. No, that's right. It doesn't go away. So I, I think, and, and I can't, you, you know, none of us, we all have to make that decision for ourselves at some point when we get to that, we get to that point, we make that decision. But I, I think sometimes we talk, you and I talk a lot about the nuts and bolts of exposure and, and you know, mm -hmm. and 
cognitive tools and things of that nature and diet and exercise and sleep and all that stuff. But sooner or later, there are philosophical, mm -hmm. you know, I think issues that come into this. And this is one of those get busy living or get busy dying. You, yeah, yeah. How many things do you want to miss out on? I know I had to, I dealt with that. And so, yeah, me too. Yeah, how do you do the dad stuff when when Hugh asks, you know, the dad stuff? Like, I wasn't doing the dad stuff, mm -hmm. you know. And I mentioned it last episode. I was, I wasn't doing the dad stuff, and that, and that started to override the risk. I was willing to take the risk. Yeah, yeah. So you know what? People ask, have asked me, like, well, I don't understand. How did you decide to start doing that work and like face up to it? Probably that. Probably that's yeah, the yeah. answer. I didn't realize yeah. until just now. What I the what I felt the negative of missing out on started to overweigh uh, override, yeah, yeah, the the need for safety or comfort and and I was not, I didn't I didn't want to miss anymore, so I was willing to take that risk. All right, maybe I'll go out and have a panic attack, but okay. Mm. Uh, I'll, I think rather, for me, rather do because that. Of, because I went through that and I was doing the stuff, so I I went down a similar path to you. I was making progress and I was definitely moving in the right direction. I was going to watch the dancing and going to school assemblies. And if I'm a million percent honest now, since the setback, I feel like the choice that I make is through laziness now. I just can't be asked to put myself through it, which is stupid because like I am missing out on the stuff and I do feel guilty about it and that, but it's just like putting yourself, it's going over, it's getting motivated again to do the right thing that's where i'm probably struggling because i've done it all before right and made that progress and felt yes i'm winning and i was and then it all went tits up again and now i just feel lazy now i just can't summon up that whatever it is the fire yeah i don't know and it's horrible like i sit here and i'm judging myself thinking i'm an ass <laughs> for admitting that i'm perhaps too lazy to even put myself through it well it's just I'm in that comfortable crap where it's just easier to not bother and not even question whether I'm going to attempt stuff anymore. Yeah. And that's, it's not a very nice place to be in. Well, I get it though. So, and especially yeah. if you've, the longer that you've spent, I think trying to engineer that where it's like, okay, I can manage this now. I have things taken care yeah, of for yeah. me. I, I, I've managed to get out of all, you know, commitments that are scary to me. We can get complacent for sure. I, I wouldn't, you know, I think one of the things that people really appreciate is that, you know, you don't, you're very open to share that sort of thing. So when you go on video and say, well, I kind of feel like I'm an ass, like, yes. you, know, you shouldn't, I mean, I think you're being really hard on yourself, but at the same time, I think we can all relate. I felt that way many, many times. Yeah, yeah. Like this mm. isn't okay. This, you know, this is, this is so stupid. I used to think that yeah, all the time. Yeah. I, I was really down on myself. So I get it. Mm. So how do you, you know, how do you address that? How do you decide there's no, and I, and I feel like we get, or I get asked this. I'm sure you do too. Like, how do you, People always say, well, how did you do that? Sooner or later, like, there's always comes down to, but but how did you do it? But how did you do it? Like, how did you decide to get out yeah, of the yeah. house? And like, I don't know I think how that, you decide. Yeah, for me, it was just, I don't know. Like, I'll, I'll refer back to that video where I was in the red coat in the car. Yes, I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> and it was just that moment that was just, and it lasted literally, well, it didn't last any amount of time. It was just a spark and I just went with it. And it was exactly the same as what you were saying watching the video of Chris. You just There was a spark and you just went for it. Right. You didn't second guess it. You just bit the bullet and went for it. And the result was surprising to you because you actually did it. And whether you felt anxious or not, right. it didn't matter because you, you survived it. And that gave you that little bit of confidence. So that's perhaps what it is. It's just finding or waiting. Well, no, don't sit waiting for yeah. it. But yeah, yeah. Because when I was sitting there in the car thinking about it, I knew that that feeling was coming because it had come a few times and I'd just sit there and not act on it. But then I made a decision. I, the next time I felt just whatever it was, an ounce of confidence, the mustard seed or whatever it is. I think Claire Weeks refers to that. Yeah. Tiny mustard seed. Just something and just go with it. Jump and Just in. forget it and see what happens. Get busy living. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's, at some point, at some point, even we can give all the tips and tricks and I can share all like the, the nuts and mm. bolts of the things that I went through. But at some point at that moment, like that moment in the car, it didn't have anything to do with a specific. I don't think you could probably teach somebody like I thought no, this, I, mean. I thought mm. this, I breathed like this and I got out of the car. All of those things but, go into that, I guess, to put you in that yeah. situation to begin with. Mm. But 
that whatever that spark is, that's a, I think I truly believe that's an emotional thing. It's a it's a philosophical thing. It's I think I think maybe the 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 techniques and the stuff like that help when you're in the so when once I'd got out of the car, yeah. then I can use the breathing. I can use the mind to focus on whatever I need to and combat those negative thoughts. But to actually get that spark in the first place had nothing to do with anything that I'd learned or read or anything. It yeah. was just a a click. Yeah, and who knows, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's it. You can't teach that. You, you can't teach it. And I think so many people want to know, like, well, how did, you know, how do I do that? How, how do I how, summon up the courage or. Right. Yeah. You know, mm. I, I know I had a comment last week, too, that I read, you know, how do you how do you manage? How do you learn to face something that's so scary to you? Mm. And, you know, sooner or later, there is you run out of technique and you actually have to start to rely on on your gut. I, I don't even know yeah, what yeah. I would call that. You know, no, it's, you, it's weird. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that you, and the it's techniques can the techniques can put you right up at that right to the edge the techniques can get you right to the edge of making that jump and then once you've made the jump they can help you after you've done it yeah but, yeah, yeah but making that jump comes down to something inside you that has to and, yeah yeah you, i suppose you've got to want it haven't you you've got to really want it you do in yourself and not for other people like i hear so many people say they need to fix this because of because their wife or because of their kids or whatever but you've got to want to feel it in yourself right it's got to light a fire in yourself because that's the only way that you're going to get out there and do it. So otherwise you just make excuses and I'm a turd for doing that. But I do that. But you've got to, you've really got to believe that you want to make a difference. Yeah. And and I think, I don't know. Sometimes I think as crazy as it sounds, the longer we stay stuck, the more mm -hmm. that may start to build. So two things can happen. If you feel like you've been dealing with this for a really long time and you're stuck and you don't know how to make progress and it's getting, Maybe it's not getting worse. Maybe you just got yourself into a comfortable spot. Mm. I think two things tend to happen. Either you start that spark starts to build, like this isn't okay, this isn't okay, and sooner or later you'll you'll find that thing inside you and and, mm. and make that leap, or despair could start to set in too. Yeah, which yeah. is but you don't want that to happen. Like I'm never mm. going to get better. I'm this is as good as it's going to get. Like and and I hear people say that that's heartbreaking. And I think you know I don't know how to teach that you got to look inside you and there's something in there that's going to throw, you know, just throw you off, not off the cliff. That's a negative connotation, but that will propel you forward. But it's, yeah, it's yeah. in there. And I, and I truly believe that everybody has it. It's in all of us. I really, really believe that. It like, has to be. Yeah. I think I've, I've felt that despair feeling before, but it's only like I felt if I've not done anything for ages or if I'm having a really bad time, but all it really takes is just one thing where I've been brave just, just one moment, I could have just stepped out the door or, or done whatever. But that's all it takes to sort of lift me out of that. And right. then you start believing again. So if anybody is feeling that despair or whatever, just push yourself. Just do something that just makes you believe that it's worth it. It's yeah. worth doing. And you can do it. That's the point, isn't it? You need to believe in yourself. You need to have some confidence from something, whatever it may be. Yeah. I think sometimes it's even just changing things up. Even if you don't break out of the, the comfort zone, if you will, even just changing the routine. If you've gotten into a yeah, set yeah. routine, you're going through the same things every day, and it was all designed to keep you away from your anxiety, well, change mm. it up. Eat something different. I don't know. You know, Get up earlier or later. Or mm. Sometimes it's it's a matter of just changing or you know, kind of overcoming inertia. Part of it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think. And... I, I, you know, this, these are hard. This is because you can't really, there's no concrete things sometimes behind it. But yeah, believing in yourself is, is a huge thing. And mm. I think feeling competent. So sometimes maybe I, I've seen people who've said, even though they're still maybe stuck at home or whatever, they're unable to work, they will start taking up hobbies that challenge them. I don't know, yeah. maybe try to learn yeah, to play a musical instrument or try to learn a new language or something. These are things mm. that you can do without getting out of your comfort zone if you need to. Mm. But to start to build a feeling of competence in, yeah, some, yeah. in something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you build a birdhouse, do something that is an mm. accomplishment. I think that that's another thing that sort of to help 
you know, because your confidence can erode away also. And then yeah, yeah. you could lose your confidence. You could start to despair. You could feel like, what's the point? You start to feel hopeless or helpless. And, and those are recipes for depression. Mm-hmm. So I think this is, this is why at some point that spark in your gut, whatever, that fire, whatever it is, it's, it's never fully goes out. Mm. You just have to try and find a way to, to find it. Yeah, you've got to try yeah. and ignite it. That's it. Just do whatever it takes. Yeah. There, there will be something just to make you feel worth it. I guess that's the thing, isn't it? Like you say, build yeah. a birdhouse. And when you finish building that birdhouse, you're going to have a f- sense of accomplishment and and worth. It's something. You did, you did something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And sometimes it has to be little tiny things. You know, organize your sock drawer. You know, I, mm. I don't know, you know, clean that room that you haven't been cleaned for two years that you keep saying mm. you want to clean. I don't, whatever it is, make some sort of accomplishment. I saw a video not too long ago. It's one of those things where it's like one of those videos that just gets passed around on social media. Mm-hmm. And it was uh, like some U.S. Navy admiral giving some graduation speech. And it starts with, if you want to change your life, start by making your bed. And that's like the title of the video. And yeah. people watching may have seen this. It went viral. And I listened to the guy give his speech, and it was pretty good. And as funny as that sounds like like a clickbait title, it literally is how he started his speech. If you want mm-hmm. to change your life, start by making your bed. Because then you will have started the day with an accomplishment. And it was it had a very military yeah, vi- yeah. vibe to it and the way they do it in the military. But you know what? There's actually wisdom in that. You will start your day having accomplished something. Yeah, yeah. So I'll pass that along, too. You know, if you mm. feel like you can't find the spark or you can't find that thing that makes you want to get busy living instead of just waiting yeah, for yeah. what, I don't know, get up and make your bed if you don't already do it. Start with that. Mm. Mm. Maybe that's something. Start to build some sort of feeling of competency and and confidence, you know, and to get you to that point. That's it. I think, that's what it's all about. You know, you mentioned something, too, like you have to feel like you're worth it. I think, mm. you know what I would say, too, and I feel really strongly about this sort of thing. There are people who, I mean, there are people who live through absolutely atrocious experiences in this world. Yeah, yeah. I mean, literally abuse and rape and horrible child abuse. And there are people who are prisoners of war for long times and held hostage and people who literally are close to starving to death every day. And mm-hmm. and those people get up every morning and still somehow manage to get through a day. Yeah, yeah. And and many times get out of those situations and survive them and and, and thrive. So <laughs> this is not a political thing, but here in the U.S. we have a U.S. senator by the name of John McCain who has, he's been there forever, and he's he's an older gentleman. Oh, I mean. Je- yeah, John McCain. I mean, John McCain <laughs> has an amazing story. He was a prisoner of war. I mean, the man lived just an atrocious thing that would you know you would think I can't possibly survive that but he adapted to being a freaking prisoner of war he was mm-hmm. he was held against his will by the enemy for however long it was unfortunately i don't know his exact story and he is now a us senator he he yeah, yeah. you know so i mean come on that is what is inside a human being so when you think That's it. yeah so you know what maybe you feel like your anxiety and your panic and your agoraphobia is really strong and powerful and, and scary and horrible and you don't want to face it well i would say f that because mm. you know mm. inside every human being is built in whatever it was that got john mccain out of a freaking prisoner of war camp into the u.s senate for christ's mm-hmm. sake so mm-hmm. what he's no better than me or you or anybody that's listening Hugh or Laura or anyone else. So take a lesson from people who live through freaking atrocities. Tornadoes wipe out homes. Hurricanes wipe out homes in entire villages. And yet 10 years later, those people are still alive and rebuilding things. So really, like, is your panic so horrible that you can't you want to hide from it? Yeah. You know what I mean? So there. (laughs) That's that's perfect. Maybe there's a little rant, but, you know. No, but the initial reaction from people that are watching this is probably like, oh, he's he's belittling my anxiety, saying that he had to deal with the worst. But that's not what you're saying. No. What you're saying is, is that the human mind and the human body can get over anything. That's what he's saying. Virtually everything. And if they can do it, then why the can't we do it? That's exactly right. That's and, the point. And I'm not yeah. saying, no, I'm not belittling anything. I yeah, yeah, I'm, no. I'm trying to put it in some sort of respect. Yeah. And I live that too. I mean, if you exactly. watched the last episode, go back and watch episode 17 if you didn't. I tell you the whole story of what I was through. I'm not belittling mm-hmm. anything. But mm. in, in the end, let's be realistic. You may have panic attack number 700, none of which has put you in a grave beforehand, 
or maybe you exactly. won't. But you know, you could also have a tornado or an earthquake wipe out your entire, you know, everything you have mm -hmm. in the world, and you would get up the next morning and start rebuilding your house stick by stick. Uh, people have people literally suffer strokes and and brain traumas and you know learn to speak and walk again and and mm -hmm. things like that. So. I mean, I, I, that's where I got, you know what I'm trying to do? I'm not trying to belittle anybody. I'm trying to inspire people, and I'm trying to tell you, like, that's where I got some of my inspiration. Exactly. Even to the point of sitting in my car some mornings and looking at the people around me and thinking, you know, I remember sitting in the parking lot of a diner near my house one morning and just sitting there in, in, in an anxious mess and looking at people who par parked their cars, got out, and went into the diner to have coffee or breakfast or whatever. And you know what? Everybody looked like shit for the most part. It was, yeah, er yeah. it was early in the morning. They had bags under their eyes. Nobody jumped out of their car with a spring in their step and a smile on their face. Everybody was dragging ass, probably going to breakfast and then to a job that maybe they didn't want to go to. And I looked around yep. and looked at those people and said, they probably feel every bit as bad as I do right now. Mm -hmm. That guy might not have slept. That woman over there might have the flu. I don't know, but she's not hiding in her car over it. And, yeah, yeah. And I really, that's where the spark came, I think, in a lot of ways from me. I had to look the, at look at that. The perspective for me is, I wish I had that view that you do. But yeah. the view for me is, if I was sitting in that diner car park and I was looking at them, I'd be pissed off at those people were able to go in there. Okay. And that's, like, that's the negative view that I would have on them. Like when I'm sitting outside a supermarket and my missus goes in, and I'm sitting there. I'm thinking, like, how? Yeah. How do, how do they just get out of their car and go and do that stuff when they probably are feeling as shit as I am? But, like, how do they do it? In, in so I, I, I prefer your method than mine. Well, so this is good. This is actually a good little point here. So, yeah, yeah. so I will look at those people. And to me, they were models for me. Like, I, I will let yeah, them yeah. model what I should be doing. And I'm not going to say that. It, it made me say like, oh, I'm fine. It wasn't like an instantaneous turn. Yeah, yeah, no, no. For You're me, saying that 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 you're no worse than them. Right, and, and it was, and you know what I realized was, they probably feel every bit as physically bad as I do, or maybe not. Mm. I mean, they were all not in a panic. I, I understand that. Yeah, but, yeah. But in a way, they all, like, had, they all had bills coming through the post. And right, they they were living the same stuff them. that I was. So <laughs> here's the difference. What I saw was two things. Number one. The difference is when, when that guy who gets out of his car and drags his ass into the diner to have coffee and then go to a job that maybe he doesn't like, he, he has stress. He doesn't like it. He's sleep deprived. He might be a little under the weather. He might physically feel beaten up or old or whatever out of shape, but mm -hmm. he doesn't interpret that as danger. So to me, mm -hmm. I thought, well, that's the difference between me and him. Like my interpretation of this is, oh, I got to run from this. His interpretation of this is, well, this sucks, but or no interpretation. He just gets he just does it. So. I looked, I tried to really think, like, what's the difference between me and that guy or me and that woman? And the difference was how we were interpreting our circumstance. Yeah, yeah. And I can control that. I can interpret it differently. So that was like mm -hmm. a glimmer of hope. And then the other thing was, like, all right, I can look at them as models. Not, not like to live like them, but all right, he just got out of his car and closed the door and hit the little lock thing and just walked one foot. For, so I'm just going to do that. Like, I'm going to feel like crap doing it, but I'll just model. I'll just act like he's acting. Mm. And after a while, when you do that, and so like, I'm terrified, I'm shaking, I'm panicky, but I'm just going to keep acting like that guy over there is acting. Mm. All of a sudden, you're not acting like it anymore. Whereas I'm sitting there thinking his life is perfect. Well, far, <laughs> far from it. I don't think Look at the way he this. locked his car. Right. He was so Holy confident shit. with that key fob. That yeah, jeez. Yeah. <laughs> he must have no stress. He has Mortgage no stress. is paid. Kids are at university. Yeah, absolutely. The dog opens the door for him when he gets home. <laughs> and his shining mansion on the hill. Oh, God. And I think in the end, so to get back to our original thing of, you know, how do you get over? So for Laura, you know. What? How, how do I know? I might say it's just like, that was a really cool effect. That was like 3D, by the way. The vapor. Oh, really? Yes, when you blew the smoke, I wanted to do this. Um, but is that the next, the next trend? Yes, we will be 3D. Next week, we'll be in 3D, people. Get and the week after that, I'm going to drop a disc track. Then. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> uh, what were we talking about? Oh, so for Laura, how do I know it's anxiety? I was just, you tell me it's just anxiety. But what if it's really not? Well, I mean, you have to weigh the evidence. I mean, you after a ton of medical examinations where, where many intelligent people are telling you you're physically fine, it comes down to this. Like, make the decision. You just have to find the spark to decide, well, screw it. Mm. I'm just doing it. I'll take the risk that my alien cancer that I have is undetected. But what's the difference? If you sit on the sofa, it's still you're still going to have the same 
thing. So, exactly. you know, and try and look around the people around you and to you, like how do you do, you know, doing the dad stuff, picking up the kids and, you know, helping your wife with the supermarket or Ron or whatever it is. You know what? To, I would say to you, like, look at, look at what his wife, what your wife is doing. You know, she's taking mm-hmm. the kids to school. So just act like she does. Even if it, even if you hate it, just act like I've she heard. does. The, the act thing. Where as do you if. stand on the act thing? I, I'm a big as fan. It, as in, yeah, yeah, I was going to say, because it, it is almost like taking on a an alter ego in it. It's certain... like just just being somebody else, just yeah. pretending to be somebody else, and just. Here's why I love the act as if. That's how I heard it. Act as yeah, if. Yeah. Act as if everything is mm. fine. Um, mm. as some people I've heard say like "fake it till you make it." However, way you 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 know whatever your version of it, it doesn't matter. But to me, what I thought "act as if" was brilliant to me because it removed the interpretation and the judgment. So yeah, I, yeah. I have these thoughts. I have these physical sensations. I'm interpreting them catastrophically. I'm judging them negatively. I'm giving them huge amount of weights that they probably don't deserve. Well, how do I not do that? Just just act as if they're not there. Yeah, yeah. And so it's it's robotic, and it's at first it's really awkward, and it's forced. Like you're mm-hmm. truly just going through the motions. But it's like anything else. You're learning a skill again. So yeah, yeah. To me, act as if was brilliant in a lot of ways. Like it was a good, easy framework to start moving forward in, and it helped remove those. Act as if you're not anxious. You mm-hmm. are. It's fine. You are anxious. Act as if yeah, you're yeah. not panicking. I am panicking, but I'm going to act as if I'm not. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Um, I know. I, I know. It sounds so like bloody easy, right? When I say it, but <sighs> I. I don't know. I'm a big fan of act as if. No, I like it. Yeah, I like it. I've used it in the past when I've done stuff. And just, I, just trying to act. That I got when I was dealing with, when I had stopped taking the antidepressants <clears throat> and I was going through that withdrawal or readaptation, whatever the hell we call it. Um, I was very active on a message board that was associated with that. And there was a woman there who, who once, I had never heard that before. And she talked, yeah, she yeah. said that the way she gets through her day, she just acts as if. And it was freaking yeah. brilliant. So Lisa... Mm. I, I'm sure Lisa is not listening. I will never have any contact with Lisa again. Maybe know. one day I will, but mm. boy, I owe her big because that was that was a big component. Act as if you got a lot of debts. I do have a lot of debts. <laughs> Damn, I don't know what I'm supposed to do with those. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Lisa was a huge help when she taught me to act as if. You're I now mean, you're now paying it forward, mate. That's the uh, that's part of the reason why I do it. I got to tell you something. To act as if and like modeling other people. My kids and my kids were little. They were they they helped me. They were they modeled behaviors for me and i just followed it like i'm gonna act uh-huh. just like my daughter's acting right now yeah, yeah you know she didn't know that but that's what dad was mm. doing <laughs> big goofball <laughs> so, oh dear. dancing around in a tutu yeah I, I don't have yeah i'm destroying those videos <laughs> <laughs> this is blackmail uh oh so anyway that that's i don't know hopefully we've sort of addressed that get busy living or get busy dying there's a it's, it. It comes down to your gut find a way to find that fire it's in mm. everybody it's in you just you got to find it and use it sooner or later that's it. yeah that's it you got to put yourself in those positions oh. we've said it so many times so what do we do you want to get any questions other questions we want to take we usually do questions at the end we've got some questions I let me just look. have a look it's just a bit where you this is the you this entertain. Is, yes, this is where I entertain. <laughs> oh, I've got some some interesting news to oh, share. Okay, lay it on me. It relates to the bowling. Oh, bowling! Because the the bowling thing hasn't gone. All I right. haven't been bowling, but on Sunday last week on Sky News, which is like the big news. Have you heard of Sky News I over have. there? Yeah, I've heard Sky. Yeah, there was a big news alert at like half two on Sunday afternoon that the bowling place in Manhattan, which is where I would have gone, right. Had, had been locked down because there was a guy with a shotgun that had taken two freaking hostages. <laughs> Seriously? Really? <laughs> Seriously, yeah, yeah. And it was all over the news for like four hours. That was That's why I didn't go bowling Sunday. So that's cleared that one up. Wow, okay, thank you. That, this is why you didn't go bowling that day. Yeah, I was going to go that day, honest. That someone, was the one day. Someone keeps asking about bowling. Olive? I think Olivia. Olivia, Olivia, Olivia. Olivia. Yeah, Olivia keeps asking. Yeah, she that. keeps asking about the bowling. Which, I do want to go makes bowling. Me laugh. My, my wife went bowling last night with her mate, but I didn't go. There you go. Just in case. I'm going to look at my YouTube while you're looking at, uh, to see okay. if there's anything else. Okay. 
There was some, I remember, I don't know whether it was a question or whether I've just imagined it, but somebody was saying about exposure therapy and just, or what's the process of actually going through, like talk through the ex, the exposure process, like actually getting out and doing whatever it is, like what's the thoughts and the feelings that we used to have and stuff like that. I don't know whether we should save that for something else but like almost visualizing one of our exposures okay and just maybe talking about exactly what we went through the actual like what the experience really was yeah yeah so the process of it billy has some awesome exposure videos i know that you could actually watch him go through right i mean you yeah you you still have them up right yeah there's one in particular i was looking back on it yesterday i was talking to one of our viewers about it on facebook and it was the one where i was walking up and down the high street yeah and it's like, because it was last year that I did that. It was this time last year that I was attempting to get from one end of the high street to the other. And okay. I still haven't done it. I still haven't actually. But I, I did it for like a week. I was doing it every day. Right. Going to park in this one car park at one end and then just walking. And I'd walk like 200 yards the first day back to the car. Okay. And like I got to the end of the week and I was really planning and I was telling, like saying on the videos, by the end of the week, I'm going to walk the high street. But I didn't. Like, I think it was about the fifth day or something. I had a major freak out. And then I just didn't bother doing it anymore. And that's the point. It's like getting over that one bad experience. Because you can have 50 good ones. But the minute that you have a bad one, it just feels like we're back to square one. That's a horrible feeling. Yeah, that's tough. And and I think we probably mentioned this before. I feel like. So much of this, the survival instinct that's built mm. into all of us, I think does really play a big role. It's so strong that any time we, we have an experience that we interpret as dangerous or threatening, yeah, yeah. you know, we can re- you can go backwards so much faster than you can go forwards. It sucks. but And isn't, isn't it interesting that, like, I did that walk so many times, Yeah, but the only ones that really stand out in my mind are the bad ones. Like, you don't – we don't celebrate the victories enough, do we? That's the way it is. I mean – you yeah, know, and I think that's pretty. That's like kind of human nature. We free focus yeah, on the yeah, negative, no matter what. Yeah, mm. I, in my business, we always laugh because you know, like we have to deal with our clients and you know, customer service sort of stuff. And I, and I always tell people like, look, nobody's going to call us to say I love you, man. They only call yeah, when, yeah. when they're that's when it. they're angry. Yeah. So yeah, we focus on the negative. So we could go through that. I think that's kind of cool. Like, let's go through the nuts and bolts of an actual exposure session. Maybe mm. what we could do one day is like maybe go through a. A video and sort of as we well i was i was thinking like because the, it's like the so, director's cut of your walk up the yeah, street, yeah. You know? yeah because i i really want to get back into it yeah. i feel that there's a few sparks igniting like over the past week or so and i really want to get back into it so maybe even if we could sort of set i don't know if there's other people that are interested in joining along i know that johnny q did loads of stuff off the back of my 31 days of may stuff i read that so if anybody wants to attempt to do something Maybe we could sort of set a task and then obviously I'll go and do it. And if other people want to do it and just share it and then we can maybe I'll put a video on of me doing it and we can sort of go through it. I don't know. Just something like that because I want to work on myself and other people obviously want to work on themselves. So maybe if we can tie it into the podcast in some way, you know? Yeah. I know one thing that we could do with exposure that would be really cool. I I like that. Like let's set a task like, okay, today, this Mm. week's task Mm. is going to be this. Um and we could maybe set something up on Facebook. I have, um, if you go to facebook.com slash that anxiety guy, I think there's a link. I'll put the link in it too. I did set up like a little discussion group associated I'm gonna, with, with I'm my gonna page. I'm going to start putting it in the, in yeah. the description. I, yeah, and I yeah. did it just on a whim because Facebook, hey, look, you can do this. So I did it. Um, yeah, and, you know, and, and Billy and I share this common experience when we have been in that type of environment. I don't care where it is. My page or I don't care. But – no, well, it's, yours is already there. Yeah, we, we could do it, and you could share video. It's it's a closed group, so you have to ask to join, which you know I, I try and be diligent about getting people in quick. But you know, if we set a task and you want to join in and discuss it, you know, we'll we'll maybe post the video. You could post a video on your channel. We could talk about it here. And yeah, if yeah. you want to join in and and make video while you're doing the task, if you're watching us and you want to join in, that would that would be the ultimate for it, me. It would be to have other people yes exactly yeah. with the same thing with you and chris that's yeah. where it started for you yeah and that's where it started for me was with watching yours and with watching other people's so like if if i can get that sort of sure 
back and, and forth going and with can, anybody else. Yeah, and whether you want to discuss in the group what your exposure was like, your success or your failure, talk about yeah, it, or, yeah. or post your own video, go live while you do it. I can promise you this. It's a closed group. I will never, I'm sure Billy would agree with this, I would never share that video outside the group. Yeah, yeah, of course. You know, on YouTube or anything like that. So I, I, that's, you know, I understand how serious that is. But yeah, uh, whoever wants to get involved with that, we can go a long way with exposure on that stuff. Yeah, yeah, I think so, that'd be cool. Yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah, so, so check, check the link in the description before yeah. you do anything else. Pause the video. <laughs> Click the link. Yeah, and ask to ask join the group, join. And, and I'll I'll try and get you in. And I, I don't know if I can. I might be able to make you an admin on the group, Billy. So you know, That's fine. I should be able to. Don't um, give me power. Don't give me power. Do not give him power. We've seen it gone awry before. Ooh. There was that whole incident with the Falkland Islands. That was all Billy. <laughs> <You> guys, <remember? laughs> um, I, I got one that um, this is from a week Go ago. On. It was actually on our episode 15. This is on YouTube. Fitness Freak Beauty, which is such a cool name. Um, I'm currently agoraphobic. Uh, I'm currently agoraphobic, and I'm getting back on exposure therapy again with my bike. Awesome. I love that you spoke about jobs because there is a sub shop, a sandwich shop. We call them subs here. Uh, okay. Five minutes away from my house. I'm working on getting back there. I'd love to work there. How do you go being? How do you go from being agoraphobic to working again? Is her question. I don't want to get hired into not being able to physically stay and lose the job, that mm-hmm, sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. And so she asked, Could I, should I focus on exposures instead of a job? And I did answer it on YouTube. And uh, <clears throat> the answer to that really is you don't go from being agoraphobic to having a job overnight in two days. Yeah, yeah. Or, yeah. You know. So, you, so I, what I told her was, yes, focus on the exposure. Because if her job, you know, if, if her goal was to get to that sub shop so she could get a job there, the first thing you got to be able to do is get out the door mm-hmm. and stay mm-hmm. out the door, you know, even if it's only in your front yard. And then, then you have to be able to stay out the door a little further from your house and a little further from your house. And so she would, I told her that she should be working on building, getting to that sub shop. Yeah, yeah. You know, eating there, sitting there for an hour and, you know, checking her email or watching a video or something, watching us. Um, so how do you go from agoraphobic to a job? Step by – one step at a time. Yeah, yeah. Somebody, One of my friends – uh, messaged me yesterday and said he needs to go to the dentist. Yeah, like how? But he's terrified of just going out the door. Sure. Let alone going to the dentist. Which most people are nervous about that anyway. And he said, "How should he do it?" And I, that was my suggestion. Like, try driving to the car park near the dentist. Right. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it never fails. I'm just gonna. We'll let it ring. Yeah, sure. Can you still hear me? <laughs> so I, I said about him going to park in the car park by the dentist, and then maybe getting out of the car, walking to the dentist. Yeah. And then maybe call the dentist and just speak to the receptionist and say, like, is there any chance I can just come and sit in the waiting room for half an hour or whatever? Yeah. You know, because they wouldn't mind. And nobody else in there is going to know why yeah. you're going to do that. But just those little steps, if you could maybe spend a couple of weeks doing that. Yes. And then you'd end up being com- <laughs> comfortable <laughs> in the place. Yeah. Jeez. That's all right. Wow. And, so, and yeah, that's really good line. advice. So yeah, and, and how do you that's build? Probably my mate saying, "I can't believe you just mentioned that." Yeah, come on, my dentist Jeez. called, kicked me, kicked me out of the waiting room. Yeah, but that's how you build any of these tasks. So if you're stuck at home and you you have to go to see the dentist or the doctor, you know, or you want to get a job, you just you build them step at a time. If you can't even get out of the house, don't worry about the dentist. Just work mm. on getting out in your front yard. You know. And although although people might think, oh, well, great, once I've done that for like a month, I'll be able to go to the dentist, but nowhere else. But it doesn't work like that, does it? Once you can actually go to the dentist, you'll have, you'll notice that you're able to do so many more things. That's, and that's exactly the key. right. Getting, yeah, think, that, that's exactly right. Like There might be people that say don't focus on just doing one thing. But if you can master that one thing, if you try something else, you'll notice that because you could deal with the feelings doing that, you can now deal with the feelings doing this, that, and the other. Yes, that's true. In fact, mm-hmm. I, I had in that discussion group um, on Facebook, facebook.com slash group slash tag forum, I think. Anyway, but uh, who wrote in there? Stick with me for a second here. Um, in that group, I had somebody who posted about that, that she was having problems getting to the doctor and the dentist, and she started putting – she grouped them all together. Um, yeah, it, it was a really good post. Yeah. Did you see that? Yeah, I really liked yeah, it. Yeah. it. And she was she decided she would um, group all the things together, which was great. And and once she was able to do one, it was easy to do the other. I think the point is, uh, if the you point. yeah, if you do it one at a t- one step at a time and rebuild these things one little piece at a time, 
you'll build competency in other areas too. So, yeah, yeah. and, and, mm. you know, if you get involved in a discussion and like, like this sort of stuff in the group or commenting on our videos and reading other people's comments, you'll get some inspiration, I think from other people. It's possible. She, yeah, yeah. she was a basket case thinking about going to the doctor and now she was like pretty comfortable going to the doctor. Uh -huh. So there you go. I, uh -huh. love, I love that stuff. Um, there you go. Got any others that we want to address? Uh, no, 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 no. Here's a good one from Paula off YouTube. Uh, is it possible to overcome anxiety if you're taking medication that contributes to your mental health issues without coming off it? It's an interesting question. That's or a is it, yeah. Is the is the key to try and wean off the medication first, or can you overcome anxiety whilst on medication? Uh, sooner or, or later. Yeah. yeah. Is it just masking over the problem? Do you always sort of go back downhill when you come off it? Or can you stay on it forever? I think sooner or later, we're going to have to talk about this whole medication thing. It's going to have to. <laughs> it's it? gonna, we're going to have to do a medication episode or episodes. So, so she's taking medication that is contributing to her mental health issues, which can happen. Like mm -hmm. There are medications that are solving certain problems. Look, every medication has some sort of side effect. Everyone. Um so maybe she's taking something that's actually making her feel anxious or making yeah, her yes. feel depressed. Mm -hmm. and, and there are medications that will do that. You know, we talked about act as if. I, I can say from firsthand experience when I was dealing with – when I stopped taking antidepressants and my brain was readapting re to life mm -hmm. without them and I was just a, you know, a neurotransmitter mess. Yeah. All that, which was similar. So, you know, there's nothing I could do. I couldn't stop that from happening. Yeah, yeah. It's just a biological mm. condition. Same thing as if she's taking these medications. I, I just had to, you know, accept that it was there and act as if. I couldn't make it go away. I just had to yeah, yeah. learn to not let it rule me. So, I know that's kind of a crappy answer, but. I'm not accepting it. <laughs> Come on, try again. <laughs> You're killing me. <laughs> Uh, it's enough. you know yeah it's hard to say if you have to take the medication because there's some medical condition that you're addressing see i i, I read the question differently to you but you've just that is exactly what the question is but i was thinking that the question was if you're on say antidepressants oh. can you overcome anxiety whilst you're on them that's, like, a, uh, that's a different question you know what i mean can you actually overcome anxiety yeah whilst on antidepressants or do they just numb you to not feeling it or what i don't know that's I've never it. taken them, so I can't, I have no experience. I have with tre tremendous amounts of experience in that area. Yeah, yeah. And my experience was initially overwhelmingly positive because I thought it was the greatest thing ever, and then overwhelmingly yeah, yeah. negative at the end. So I've been on all mm. all points in that spectrum. But I think that's that's for its own show for sure, or yeah, yeah. multiple episodes. The quick answer, and it's my opinion. This is just my opinion. I do not believe that you can fully get past these issues mm -hmm. while you have some chemical shield in front of you. Because in even in the end, and I know many people who are taking these medications, who have taken them for years, who are tolerating bad side effects mm -hmm. because they think they have to. Yeah, yeah. Or, or people who are taking like benzodiazepines, you know, uh, um, Xanax, what we call them, Xanax or Prozac or, not, or Valium or so, you know, Ativan in the US. I don't know what you call them in the, US, in the UK, but you know, tranquilizers. Mm -hmm. the, the sedative, the sedative. Yeah, diazepam. If it ends in AM, it's, it's, a, it's a benzo. So if you're taking one of those, I know people who take those and have taken them regularly for years and years and years that still can't leave their homes and they have crippling panic attacks. So mm -hmm. those medications are no longer working, but they're still yeah, taking yeah. them because they're, they're crutches or their safety behaviors, their rituals that they, they mm -hmm. have to follow. So my, my opinion, I don't want to get too deep into it now because it's just a quick, but quickly, my opinion on that is no. At some point, you've got to leave that crutch behind. Yeah, yeah. You have to leave it behind. My um, opinion is that I need to learn to read the questions properly and understand <laughs> them. Well, but you know what? That's a good question. Her question was good as asked, but, but your interpretation is also a question yeah, yeah. that mm. I know we get. So, so there you go. Um, right. Yeah. Do you have any others? I don't. I don't think I do. I, I do. This more. is from Kate. Uh, la, 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 la. She's working on exposure therapy. Every time she reaches a point, the thought process goes from calm to I need to run or don't do this or oh my god I'm stuck at this traffic light. What would be a good technique to use so she's not white knuckling it and panicking the entire time? She wants exposure therapy to count and not just be a ball of panic that doesn't get her anywhere. 
Okay. So it's again, it's it's the interpretation, isn't it? It is. It's the interpretation and the expectation of what exposure is supposed to do. Yeah, you yeah. Know, we've said this many times. Exposure isn't going to make your panic go away. Expo- mm. In fact, exposure mm. will make you panic, especially mm. in the beginning. The object mm. of the game is not to make it not happen. It's to let it happen and not care. That's my answer to that. I was just thinking like the differences between a planned exposure and an unplanned exposure. Sometimes never, the- I don't think we've ever talked about stuff like that. We like have your not. Missus, your missus takes you to go shopping one day. And then the next day, you plan to just go and sit in the supermarket car park. Right. I wonder what the varying differences are between how you planned it. Maybe. Planned. Yeah, yeah. You know what? I think maybe the forced stuff would probably be. Go on. What was you going to say? It depends on what it is. I think unplanned. If you have to, if you're stuck in your house and somehow or other circumstances propel you to get in a plane and fly to another city, mm-hmm. that that's a tough one. If you're stuck in your house, but somehow you had, you know, your your kid got hurt at school, minor injury, hopefully, mm. you know, and you ha- had to go and take care of your kid. That's an They're un- on holiday this week. What the hell is she doing at school? There you go. That is an unplanned. She's hanging out in the schoolyard making trouble. Um, Say that. That that is that would be an unplanned exposure. And and I think uh, I, I think unplanned exposures well you had a situation not too long ago with your dad who was in the I was hospital. just going to say that yeah I was just thinking about you that didn't, in my you mind didn't plan it was like, that right but you just yeah. did it you, you mentioned many times how like well you weren't really thinking about it yourself I got that call I got the call in the morning and yeah. it was just you just do it something took over. I once got stopped by the police <laughs> I don't know why I'm telling you this I once got stopped by the police in my car it was just a routine stop but Hardened I felt criminal. really guilty yeah yeah and like I've said it, I think I've said it so many times, but when you're under pressure like that, or when I'm under pressure like that, if something's kicking off or if something's major happening, right. I just deal with it. I deal with it so much better than if my kid was to ask me if I wanted to go to the shop. And it's ridiculous. Like the time I got stopped by the police, I had to get out of my car, sit in the back of theirs. They went through all my documents and everything. Yeah. And everything was fine and that. But like I was absolutely bloody fine. How crazy. But if I'd have gone, if my daughter had said, can we just nip in McDonald's and grab six chicken nuggets? Nope. A little bit of basket case. Sure. Yeah, yeah. So sometimes so odd. Exposure, planned versus unplanned, sometimes the unplanned exposure are the I'm best one. Driven. You don't have the opportunity to have that anticipation, the anticipatory anxiety. You just got to mm-hmm. go and, and do something. Sometimes they're the best ones. But I, I think to address the question, though, that you got, she wants exposure to count and not just be a ball of panic. Well, you're supposed to be a ball of panic. So if yeah, you yeah. if you are pushing yourself to do something that makes you panic, you are actually doing it right. Yeah, yeah. The goal of that exposure is to teach you that you do not have to be afraid to panic. Mm-hmm. So, sorry, but so, the, the goal of the exposure is to be so, really uncomfortable. So don't get stopped by the police. Go in McDonald's for chicken nuggets. <laughs> well, it's always That's... the bad news, though. So that, you know, you are, you are supposed to be a ball of panic. You are supposed to be uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah, I know exactly. that sounds, you know, a little bit like sadistic of me or that I'm suggesting that people should be That's the only way that you can it. learn, though, isn't it? But the goal of the exposure is to be uncomfortable so you can learn that you don't have to be afraid of being uncomfortable. Mm. So We've said that hundreds yeah. of times. I'll it's keep like saying the, it, yeah. On the 31 days of May when I was doing the walks and I was feeling great, Yeah. nothing. But on the days when I felt like crap before I went and yeah. did it yep. and came back, that was when I felt an achievement. Right, so it is, as crazy as it sounds, the ones where you feel the exposure where you feel badly is the one that yeah, actually yeah. counts more than anything else. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I think that the the person who asked that question has it backwards. You know, you're not trying not to panic. You actually do want to be yeah, 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 and, and learn that you don't have to be afraid of that. Good point. Yep. Let's have a look. Yep. I have a look. I think I may have one more that came up. Um. It. You know what? I I I would really encourage people to get involved in this group. Um. We'll definitely put the thing in the the, uh, the link in there. Yeah, yeah. Um, do we? Do you know anything about? Is it atrial fib- fibrillation? Oh yeah, you know what? That's a good point. Uh, atrial? Fi- no, I'm not a cardiologist. Um, okay. I I know about premature ventricular contraction because I have yeah, them, and yeah. most of us do. A fib is a different thing. It was a question from Mary, just saying, do you have any suggestions how to deal with health anxiety? When you have health conditions that aren't caused by anxiety, right? Well, she has AFib. Um, yeah, she has AFib. Heart can go crazy at any time, any place. Having a hard time to manage the fear of possible AFib episode, and it's causing her to avoid so many things. 
because that's a really because you can't really suggest how to fix it if you don't know what it feels like i guess well agree yes I, and i think you left me hanging then no I thought, no oh god no 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 <laughs> i didn't leave you hanging I what was have I, said? I was also reading that's a those are real concerns so here's the bad news sometimes we can't engineer everything bad out of our lives so mm. you know a real medical condition is a real medical condition. And, and yeah, atrial fibrillation, I'm sure is scary. I don't have a direct experience with it, but mm. I know there are professional athletes that I've known have been diagnosed with it. They had to end their careers over it. It's, I, mm. I think it's manageable. She, there's probably medication and whatnot. I'm not going to yeah. you know, talk about the, the ins and outs of AFib, but yeah, it's disconcerting. It's scary. It's, it's, it's I suppose ups- maybe upsetting. separating, separating the two. Yes. So anxiety is anxiety, you know? Yeah. But but I think way. it's probably reasonably natural to be anxious about possibly oh, yeah, having yeah. an atrial fibrillation episode. I mean, well, look know, at me when I had a cold a couple of weeks ago. You know, it's a thing. Yeah, so, yeah. You know, I, I I don't. There's no magic bullet that somehow gets us around feeling badly about real medical conditions. They they're real and sometimes and and having anxiety about them. I think the best way to probably is you have to separate. What anxiety are we talking about? Is it anxiety about being anxious or it is anxiety about, you know, in her case, having an irregular heartbeat? Yeah, yeah. The irregular heartbeat one is normal, like welcome to being human. You will probably have some anxiety over that. I would. I think you would. Mm. We all would. Mm. But there's a difference between that, which is an actual concrete thing that you would not, that you do want to avoid and you want to, you'd be anxious over versus I'm anxious just because I don't want to be anxious. I, mm. I, I don't want to panic. So, you yeah, have to start to se- yeah, you have to separate them. You're right. That's a, that's a, uh, that's probably a weak answer, but I think it's probably accurate. We'll take that one. We'll take that one. Um, but uh, it leads me to another one. I, I had somebody actually get a message on Facebook, and I think it was also talked about in this group a little bit. Vision issues. Again, the nuts and bolts of the vision issues. I don't want to go into that much because I'm not an expert at that stuff. But um, when there are real medical conditions, I mean, also. I don't want to say this. I'm not going to say what I was going to say. Vision issues. Vision issues, yes. So same situation. This person has has developed some actual vision issues. There are real things that could be wrong with your eyes. My eyes don't work. I have the worst <laughs> vision ever. But um, said that. floaters and color problems and things of that nature, these are real things that can happen. And yeah, yeah. Not some of it could be exacerbated by anxiety, but some of it is not. So we sometimes – it's really hard when you have those actual conditions with – to separate that we need to do a video on symptoms like probably digging down into each because yeah. i get the vision stuff i get the vision stuff bad sometimes it doesn't it doesn't seem to bother me as much anymore but like right. floaters and just weird peripheral vision seeing shit all over the place sure and, sure you know i get all that stuff but but so I, i've do... had my i've had i've had eye tests and stuff so i know yeah that if if there was anything, then they would have picked up on that. And an eye test isn't that scary. No. Like, I've had eye tests at home. Where yeah. the, what are they? Optometrist. The optometrist, yeah. Wow. Well done. I'm good. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> They've come to the house and, like, put all the lenses in and all that kind of stuff and do the tests. And yeah, yeah. Is it glau- glau- glaucoma? Glaucoma, yeah, yeah. Jeez, I am full of it. You are. I'll you are... put this dictionary away. <laughs> you don't need it. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I've had, I've had that. So if any, if you do have visual issues, you can get eye tests at home. Yeah. If that would, but I mean, it's not ideal because ideally we should be going to the opticians. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can think of the difficult words, but yeah, yeah. Optometrist, you should be yeah. going there and you should be having it. And I've had eye tests in store before, but like, I don't know, it was probably about a year ago I had one come out, right. do all the stuff and everything was fine. And that kind of put my visual issues to bed. But yeah, I think, and plus you can have vision issues that people without anxiety have the same issues. Yeah, yeah, floaters and flashes and things, especially as we start, yeah, to get, yeah. we start to get older, our eyes sometimes do funky things. Something yeah. else. This is like nobody's mentioned it, but like night terrors. There's probably people that get that kind of stuff. Probably, but I, I get a lot of stuff where I wake in the night and I see like people. I've had stuff where I've woke up and there's been people standing next to the bed, like I've kicked out and jumped out of bed before and stuff like that like cr- real crazy like my missus thinks i'm a nutter 
like she'll wake up and I'll be like standing over the other side of the room and she'll say what's up and I'll just be like oh there was just somebody standing there well, obviously there isn't that's not anxiety <laughs> that that's your house is haunted dude you might yes. wanna, you might want to move I'm not sure yeah thanks <laughs> just saying at ease yeah <sighs> well, I feel better now. whole discussion on ghosts <laughs> <laughs> no I mean. The, no, the, but it is because, like, within the a split mind second, is a powerful thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly. And sometimes that's a carryover from dreaming. You know, mm. you're you're mm. sort of awake, but you're not really awake, kind of thing. They're not ghosts. Sure, they're not. No, they're definitely not ghosts. Shit, those are your ancestors from Valhalla. There yes. too. Inspired. Isn't that a log flume? No, <laughs> Valhalla's a log flume in Blackpool. <laughs> oh, uh, what else can I say here? Um, I'm just going through the group a little bit. Go for it. Oh, atrial fibrillation. Maybe it was the same person. Mary. Mary. Yeah, okay. There you go. There you go. Um, See? This is Jackie who talked about going to the doctor. Anyway, now I'm just scrolling through Facebook, and that's boring. Uh, Donna, who says, I was still listening. Oh, people who make it all the way to the end. We're up to an, almost an that's hour brilliant. on this one again, too. Brilliant. You know I what? Love the hour, the hour-long episode. The hour-long episode. We, we, yeah, yeah we put out more live. We put out more television than, like, Friends. Seinfeld was a half hour, and that guy made you know? millions doing that. We're doing an hour at a time like it's nothing. Um, some people moan that we have one advert at the start. Come on. <laughs> How many ads were during Seinfeld? Well, well, Donna was still listening, and she posted in here. There you go. I was still listening. Thank, thank you, Donna. We appreciate that. It's yes. funny because I looked at my YouTube stats. I, we were talking about the app on my phone. I never look. And um, I saw that the average view time was like 21 minutes. And I'm thinking, well, people are bailing That's- then because we're doing 40 and 50 minutes here, man. Yeah, yeah. So, but no, yeah, that's, that's pretty good, that's, mate. That's, that's pretty good to, for him to get that freaking far. I guess, especially but, with the rude guy on the right. <laughs> but I have, yeah, I see we got a lot of mileage out of the rude comment. That was so funny. Um, all right, I, mean, I think we probably summed it up here. Get busy living or get busy dying. Find it in your gut to like. Just, yeah. Just find that shit because you you have it. It is there. Just do it. Do it. Do something today that 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 reminds yourself that it's still there, and. Uh, Join the discussion group and let's get some community going. That's it. And stuff. We'll put that's the, that's the main thing for me yeah. to take away at the moment is to get people in the group. The link is in the comments. Yeah. I mean, the link is in the description. description. Sure. Idiot. Yep. Join it and let's try and we'll work on something. If there's like with the exposure task thing, I think that'd be awesome. I think it whatever awesome it is, too. it doesn't matter what level you're at. No. We can all we can all do whatever it is. It's not going to be climb the Empire State Building the first week. We'll save that. Sure. To like week seven. Week two. Seven. Yeah. You're very lean. Yeah. I was thinking week three tops. But yeah. uh, it's really cool. I would encourage people to do it too because there's a lot of inspiration to be had. I, I will say this about the group before we sign off, I guess. Hey, it's my group. And in this case, I am not going to let it become a symptom fest. Sorry. Exactly. I'm just not. Yeah, yeah. So I yeah. understand we all need reassurance sometimes, but um, – yeah, we're, this is this is all about encouraging each other and inspiring Gross. each other and cheering each other on and 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 commiserating when we have to, which is normal. We do have to do that, mm-hmm. but I I like to focus on moving forward as opposed to just being sobbing about being stuck. So yeah, yeah. and I think it's we're off to a good start. Yeah, it's yeah, a good yeah. group of people, so let's join join us. So let's do it. All right, peeps. Thanks for t- tuning in. Are we out. We're done. We're out. We're done. We'll see you next week for episode 19, and we'll figure out two minutes before we go on the air what we're going to talk about like we usually do. So is it? It seems I'm looking work. forward to it already. It seems to be working out pretty well, though. I love it. Uh, maybe podcast I'll, day is the best day I'll the have week. a different background next time. I'll sit in a different room. I don't know. I feel like I need a change of scenery. Maybe. We'll, I don't think, know. we'll yeah. think about it. You have a good setup. <laughs> All right, guys. We'll see you next week. Thanks for tuning in. Cheers. <laughs>